a couple of years ago, I was asked to go out and speak at uh, Jonathan Dixon Park by the chaplain. It was on a Sunday morning, and uh, I took a man from my Sunday school class. Called, his name was Brother Tatum, and he was around 80 years old. And as I went out to the park, was waiting for the people to come from the camp around, as I was standing up going over my notes, I looked down at Brother Tatum, who was around 80, as I said, and uh, he looked up at me with, with a shining face, the sun was shining, and he said to me, Vern, he said, I love God so much. He said, I can't do enough for my Savior. And because when I speak about this, it does break my heart. And I, what I'm going to say tonight, the title would be, Break Me. God wants all of us to be the kind of vessel that he can use. You know, in this world, when something is cracked and broken, we lose the value. In fact, I've been praying about getting another car. And if, if you knew my life story, I have a problem when I buy something new because I went through that as a Christian years back. And I took my car down to see what they'd give me for it, and they started finding problems wrong with my car, and the valuation had dropped, and they wouldn't give me what I thought it was worth. But you know, with God, when we have are broken, when we as Christians are broken, that is when God can really use us in our Christian life. And so, if you'd open up your Bible in Psalms, chapter 34, 18, and I just have a few minutes, but the title is, Lord, Break Me. We've been praying for revival in our church, and until God breaks me and and breaks you, that we come to a place in our life where we're broken, where God can really use us, then we're going to have this revival. In Psalms 34, 18, it says, The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. In Psalms 51, 17, it says, The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. Contrite heart. Contrite means crushed, smashed, flattened. That's what God is looking for. O oh God, thou will not despise. God, in his all his mercy, resists the proud and haughty. But he cannot resist a person who is humble and contrite. God opposes the proud, but he is drawn to the brokenhearted and the humble. Back in, in Psalms and David, when back in uh, chapter 32 and 51, if you had time, if you went through that, all the sin that happened to David in that time, he was too proud and resisted God. And he had problems and things didn't go right. But when he came to the time where he was broken and he went to God and asked God to forgive him, he repented seriously repented and God took him and any David could sing praises unto the Lord because he had come back to God back in the Old Testament back after King Solomon when the nation was divided and the ten tribes went to the north and the other two tribes went to the south the problems they that they had because they were they wouldn't repent and God sent out prophets after prophet to get to these people to repent but they could not hear the word. They were too proud. But see, when we as Christians come to a point in our Christian life that we have this broken spirit and a broken heart, then God can use us in his work. In James 4.16, God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. There is something about our humbleness appeals to the compassion of God. You know, back years ago, when I was in the servant, I came from, from back 
in the Philippines, and we went to Japan after the war. I had so much hatred in my heart because I'd been taught to kill and all the things against the Japanese people. And when we landed in Yokohama, and they sent us off to this base, and all, I saw all these marching Japanese men still in their uniforms, I had a hate for them. But you know, when they came to me, you've never met people as humble as the Japanese people if you ever worked around them. They were so humble and bowing and that, that they broke what I had been taught to hate and I began to love them and that. And when I, the time I got ready to leave when they was gonna send us back, I had Japanese people that I'd worked with come up and give me presents and that, and we were exchanging things. But when I went there, I hated them because I'd learned to kill them and that. You see, it's something about a broken heart that draws people to God. And that's what we need in our own life. You know, so many times I need to be reminded who I am. I never get to the point in my Christian life I'm so proud that I can't be broken for Jesus. And thank God for my Savior. And at this time, Christian, Christmas time, I'm reminded again of what Jesus did on the cross for me. The world at Christmas time sometimes just gets a little glimpse of what it's all about. And it's up to us as Christians to expand that in their vision. I'm so thankful that Jesus Christ saved me. It was because I stood over a Japanese dying without arms and that never come from a home that taught Christianity. And because I looked down at him, I said to myself, if I die, I'll go to hell. I gotta do something about this. And I started going to church. My heart was broken, and I started doing things in the service until I got home, until I was shown in the Bible, John the third chapter, and Romans the tenth chapter, and some of these were shown to me that it wasn't religion, it was Jesus Christ that makes a difference in my life, and I'm so thankful for that. But I have to have a broken heart in my, to serve God, and when I get above a broken heart, then I'm no good for Him. And I want to thank Jesus for my salvation.